Hey, this is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Dodge Viper. Yeah, it's straight up just called the Dodge Viper, and it's kind of funny because you have mods like the Bruckle Horsepower GT up here, where you can tell that it's a Ford Mustang, but it's not labeled as such. And then we have this one where it's like, look, you know it's a Dodge Viper, so that's what we're going to call it. Anyways, we have nine options available. We're going to be starting off with the base model, and a lot of the time when you start off with the base model, you end up a little bit disappointed because the other ones are so much better. Not really the case with this one, because even the base model has the gigantic 8.4 liter V10 engine. And when I think of modern cars, I can't think of a single one that has an engine bigger than this thing. The only thing out there that you see all the time that has an engine bigger than this would be like a big rig. It has a huge engine and it has that very distinctive V10 sound where wherever you hear it, your head will whip around to see what it is. And it's almost always just a pickup truck. But once in a blue moon, it'll be a Dodge Viper and it's awesome to see. And that's pretty much all you ever see with a V10 engine, it seems like nowadays. So anyways, I'm going to let you guys listen to this so you can hopefully understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, that'll do it for the sound test portion of the video. I just really like the way this thing sounds, so I had to make sure you guys got a really good listen to it. Anyways, let's go ahead and wreck this thing. And yeah, I could have wrecked it with the last one, but we did a little bit of damage when we were jumping it, so I wanted to have a fresh car for this first crash. So we go right into this wall at about 70 miles per hour. I don't quite believe that speedometer because we were sliding all over the place as it read 82 miles per hour. And then we'll go ahead and speed it up as the parts fly off. And we'll take a look here. So how does it look? The fenders look pretty good. The hood looks pretty good. And what about the part that fell off, the front bumper? It's actually virtually unharmed somehow. I guess it just kind of fell off in a way where it didn't get hit. And then the back of the car looks unharmed as you'd expect. So that is a very good looking crash for that situation. So we'll reset it and then we'll have a couple more things we could do. Like over here, we might be able to make it fly a little bit if we just floor it. And then, yep, that's a flight. And there goes the trunk of the vehicle. Although you can't see anything and I know it can still drive. So let's try to grab it by the roof and get it upright again. Come on, almost there, and good to go. So, looking at the damage here again, very reasonable on the front, and well, kind of hard to see the damage to the trunk since it fell off. Let's go try to find it real quickly. There it is. Okay, it's upside down, but we can fix that. If I can flip a car, I can flip a trunk. Door not. Flipping a trunk is harder than flipping a car, and by the time I flip it, it'll probably be more damage. There we go. We got it up, and looking at it, yeah, that looks perfectly reasonable. And actually, for some reason, this thing can't drive anymore. I guess I uh, messed up the rear suspension just a little too much where I can't really get traction, unfortunately. So I'll reset it, and then let's talk about how this thing drives. If you floor it, you will spin the rear wheels in gears one through three, basically. It has unlimited torque, but the traction is limited, and it doesn't have any sort of stability control or anything like that. It does have ABS, so you can see the light lighting up as I slam on the brakes right there, but nothing to help you as you accelerate. So you do have to be careful with that. Like, if you're just kind of crazy and you floor it all the time or if you're trying to drive with the keyboard it is a bit of a handful like i have to let up on the gas a lot with this thing to keep it straight because it wants to spin out all the time it really does feel like a death trap right here but i'm doing my best to control the death trap and keep it on the road and i want to slow it down to make this corner i'm not going to make it just go ahead and do a little bit of a loop right there it's good at doing that if you want to do a corner like that it does that excellently because it will have the power to do a quick spin around like that all the time and going up this hill, it has so much power, it's not even slowed down by the hill, of course. Although the transmission was hunting for a gear a little bit because we fly through the air so harsh. All right, got a little bit of over rev damage there from me revving it too hard and flying through the air and bouncing all over the place. But trying my best just to keep it straight. Unfortunately, we can't go fast when we're bouncing in the air. Could try hitting that tree maybe, but nah. Let's try to slide this into thump so we can see some more side impact damage. That's going to be a good one. A little bit of damage already, but there's the meat of the impact. 
That looked like a really nice crash right there in slow-mo. Let's take a closer look at the damage then. So the parts that fell off, they look fine. Like the trunk over there still looks fine, just like last time. Front bumper, again, kind of undamaged funnily, but that's okay, I guess. We did hit it on the side, not the bumper. All right, looking over here, that door, dented as you'd expect. Side of the rear right there, pretty reasonable. Bumper, reasonable. Everything about that crash looked pretty good. And we'll reset the car one last time in this area, but I don't want to go in this area anymore because it's getting a little bit stale because we've been here for five or six minutes straight. But this is the easiest way to get to the highway, and I want to do some high-speed driving with this thing. I just got to make sure I get there without crashing. The funny thing is, I'm doing half throttle at all times. I can still kick the back end out that easily. We could be going highway speed, second gear, or third gear, and I can still kick the back end out that easily. This thing, so much power, man. You got to respect this car, otherwise it will spin out on you. Which, as far as I know, is pretty realistic to a real Dodge Viper. And also, I'm hitting the brake lights all the time. And I absolutely love how the Viper logo on the rear lights up like that. That looks so cool. But all the other lights on the rear here work as well. You know, you got those reverse lights. You saw them kind of light up for a second. And you also got the blinkers. They work as well. And then heading over to the front, we also got the blinker right there. And we could turn on the headlights. And they lay it up beautifully. No problems with that. The only thing that doesn't light up is the interior gauges. But... That's a pretty minor thing considering how nice the exterior of this vehicle lights up. So let's make our way onto the highway. We're not going to actually go straight from this point though. We're going to do a quick 180 because we have more straight road if we go the opposite direction from here. So we're going to do a quick little spin right there. And now it's time to actually use full throttle, which means, yeah, we're going to be leaving a big fat skid mark the whole way. Second gear still leaving a skid mark. Actually got let up a bit to keep control of the vehicle. Third gear. Still leaving a bit of a mark, but it's calming down. And then fourth gear, we can floor it safely without the car trying to spin out and murder me in the inside of it. And we're already up to 150, 160 miles per hour. All kinds of power in this thing. 170. We're going to get to like 180 by the time we get to the end of this highway. And it's not even that long of a highway compared to uh, how fast we're going. It's so 190 plus miles per hour. And we're going to hit this thing hard. I'm going to try to just kind of ride it up on this ramp maybe a little bit. We're going to use 100 times slow motor because we're going so fast, almost 200 miles per hour. And if this thing becomes just a mangled mess, that's perfectly reasonable for the speeds we're flying at right here. And yeah, it's now we're flying at because, well, we're not on the ground anymore now, are we? All right, are we going to clear the uh, sign? Yes, but we're not going to clear that road over there that's half constructed. We're going to slam right into that thing. We'll go ahead and speed it up a little bit as we slam into it and we'll use 100 times slow-mo once again because we're still going at a very high speed. And actually, we are going to clear it. We're just going to barely scrape the roof. Oh no, not scrape the roof. The roof's going to get caught. And Whenever a part gets caught like that, no matter the vehicle, the crash is going to look really janky. Like if a stock vehicle crashes like that and the part gets stuck, it's going to look really janky just like this one. So not much to look at there. We'll just go ahead and oh no, not back to this area. What am I thinking? Get out of here. <laughs> just fly back to there. There we go. That's better. How about we uh, go ahead and take a look at one of the other versions of the uh, vehicle though, and we'll do a high speed run in the opposite direction. And the next one we're gonna be taking a look at, it's not gonna be any faster in a straight line, but I wanna see if I can get up to 200 miles per hour with it. We're gonna be using the ACR version. So this is the American Club Racer variant, known for being very sporty and excellent on the track, and hopefully also fast on the highway. But as I said, this one will be slower in a straight line because it has a lot more downforce because there's a whole picnic bench strapped to the rear of it which looks awesome to be honest with you. And then we also have the front splitter over here and then these extra canaras on the sides as well that just give the vehicle a bunch more downforce. And we also have better wheels that give you a little bit more traction so you can still floor it and spin all over the place like I'm doing right here, but maybe in second gear it doesn't slide quite as much as it used to. It still is a lot of power for the vehicle, no matter what wheels you put on this thing basically. It also has that really nice looking ACR paint job. Like American cars, they just know how to do the stripe on a vehicle right. No other country knows how to put a stripe on a vehicle as good as American cars. It's just one of those things we got down to a science somehow. And I don't know exactly how it happened, but cars like the Viper and the Corvette with the stripes, like, oh, that's a nice looking car. Anyways, we're getting really close to 200 here. Really, really close. I run up on the wall, but I was not going to make it up to 200. And the whole front of the car went smush again. That was such a high speed crash. Yeah, that's actually an okay looking crash, believe it or not. We need to do some lower speed crashes soon, but it's just so fun to drive this thing fast. And we're going to drive it fast again because I do want to see. If we get the base model out, will it reach 200 miles per hour? Because it has less downforce. It should have a higher top speed technically. And I think it'll be able to reach 200 miles per hour in this exact same distance, even though it has a little bit less traction. So it's a little bit slower out the gate like that. And also, no, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a big difference between the ACR and the base in terms of top speed. 
But the thing is, we're going at controlled distance, and when you're going at speeds that high, every mile per hour is pretty hard to get. So far though, it does feel like we're going a little bit faster than the ACR. Not significantly, but I'm pretty sure we're going a little bit faster because when we went around this corner last time right here, we weren't going 195. So it's gonna be close. Can we get a 200? Come on, 200, 200. And I actually cleared the jump. <laughs> so I didn't get super badly damaged. Instead, we're just gonna roll along the highway for a little bit and see if we can come to a stop without falling off of the road. We actually got a little bit of steering here. Now, I can't really judge if the amount of damage looks good, but I can at least take a look at the vehicle and see if any damage looks terribly bad or anything like that. And I'm looking at this right now. All the damage to the vehicle looks like perfectly good damage. So in the end, that is kind of a test crash. That's great. So anyways, let's go ahead and reset this. And while we're doing all this high speed testing, we got to try out the one that's called top speed. I don't think we're going to reach the top speed of it, but we should go a lot faster than the ones we've been driving, even though we've already been going 200 miles per hour. So on this one, it says, Fitted with a supercharger and nitrous and built to exceed speeds of 550 kilometers per hour. How fast is that? Well, that's more than 330 miles per hour. This thing has so much power, I'm actually going to use manual mode just to control its power because if it shifts wrong, you will spin out. You got to use gentle throttle through like every gear. Even in fifth gear going 200 plus miles per hour, you can still spin the wheels. That's the crazy thing about this thing. You can spin the wheels all the way through fifth gear. When you finally get to sixth gear, you can't spin it anymore. But at sixth gear, we're going 225 miles per hour. Now we're finally flooring it. And this is the true meaning of speed. A fraction of the distance, and we were going 250 miles per hour before we came the Beyblade of Death. Again, this is one of those crashes where it's really not worth looking at the damage, unfortunately, though, because it was such a high speed crash. There's really no way to judge how well it fared. You've seen what it can do, now let's go over why it can do that. First off, it has a huge supercharger on the engine. Unfortunately though, every vehicle has the exact same engine model. If there was one weak point to the vehicle, it's the engine model and the underside of the vehicle. Both of those are a little bit lacking in detail compared to everything else. So let's not look too closely at those. The important thing is when you look at the engine like this, it looks perfectly fine. Anyways, it has a huge supercharger on it that gives it more horsepower than any stock drag vehicle. And it's a good couple hundred more, and then it also gives out the power in a way that's much better for those high speed runs. And no normal transmission is gonna be going that fast. So this thing has a modified transmission that allows it to go over 300 miles per hour. And it also has a suspension setup made to keep the vehicle a little bit more stable at those crazy high speeds. It also has better brakes because you need good brakes to slow this thing down. And then if we go to the back of the vehicle, there is some nitrous we could take a look at. You kind of saw it as we were crashing, but I didn't really point it out, but now we're gonna. So you pop that off and there's the nitrous bottle. I believe it's the same stock bottle in BMG drive just placed into the trunk of this thing. You can see the trunk isn't too super detailed or anything like that. So again, we're not going to look too closely at that. Although the interior of the vehicle looks perfectly fine here. It's not super detailed though, because the gauges don't light up, but they do function and you do got a functional steering wheel as well, at least. And I think that's about all I'll need the top speed version for. So let's go ahead and swap it out for a different version that we have yet to drive. Let's go with the track version because it says a more tame, street legal, naturally aspirated track variant. Perfect for beating everything on the track and on the street. So. It should be good for the streets. We're going to try it out as we try to go to the track on this map. But first off, let me go ahead and remove all the other vehicles that are here because I don't need them anymore. Perfect. All right, here we go. Already losing traction in first gear, as is tradition with this car, basically. So this is kind of like an upgraded ACR, it feels like. It has a more aggressive suspension setup that's more tuned for the track than the streets, which is kind of saying something because the ACR is already a pretty extreme vehicle. And this one's like, yeah, here's another level to it. Of course, there are ones that are even more levels to it, like the one we were just driving. The top speed is even more, but then there's also a race one, which is another level yet again. But in addition to that, it also has racing brakes, so it slows down a little bit better. It has different gear that's a little bit more suited for the track, and hopefully we're making good use of the racing brakes right here. Whew, that was good. I wasn't sure if I was braking a little bit too late right there, because it's hard to know when to brake when you're going almost 200 miles per hour. Everything's moving so fast, your judgment just kind of gets messed up. But anyways, in addition to that, it has a racing exhaust setup, with different wheels on it. And then it has upgraded engine internals, which doesn't make it any more powerful because you really don't need more power when you have 500 plus horsepower already. But what it does do is it makes it more reliable on the track, I would assume. And so far on the streets, this thing isn't actually doing that bad. I figured maybe the streets might be a little bit too bumpy for it, but it's doing a very solid job at getting to the racetrack. And we're nearing it right now, although there is kind of a big roundabout way of actually getting onto the track which is kind of 
dumb. There's no like direct route from where I'm coming from right onto the track unless you want to like do a jump which destroys your car. And I'm trying to do this a little bit legitimately. I feel like this is actually my car and I'm actually going to a racetrack. You know, live in the story, live in the dream of having a real nice car, that kind of thing. Got to slow it down right here. So we go to the right right here, then we have like a back road and a parking lot and eventually we are going to get to the track. Those are actually pretty neat looking trees. They're nice and tall and slender. And this car backfires so much. Every time I'm slowing down to accelerate and there's a few backfires, it seems like, there you go, boom, 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 boom. And it does look cool when it backfires too because it actually backfires from the sides instead of the rear like almost every other car I've driven. Like when you see them backfiring from the sides, you see it on both the left and the right. You see it more on the left or more on the right depending on which way you're turning. And then as you slide, you see it even more. It's just cool to watch. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe the backfiring is a little bit overkill on this thing. It does it all the time. All right, so we got to level up to the racetrack right here. We kind of got like a Auto X style track right here where you don't have any real big elevation changes or anything. You're basically driving in circles on a parking lot and so you can drive the circles the fastest because I feel like if I jump right into the racetrack, I'll crash immediately. At least with this, I get a little bit more of a feeling for how this thing performs on a track, except again, not exactly a track. Really, I'm not learning much here. I didn't learn on the street since I drive so irresponsibly on the streets in this game. So let's just go ahead and make our way actually to the track. Right over here, this is the exit from the pit lane. So we're going to be heading right on the track in a nice and ordinary fashion, actually. If I would stay on my side of the road, <laughs> I'm all sliding all over the place a little bit. All right, first corner on the track, I went a little bit too slow. I should know, I do not know the track at West Coast USA very well. I've raced it maybe once or twice, but it's not like I've really learned its corners or anything like that. So everything I'm doing is just based on what I see ahead of me, which means my speed is going to be a lot less than it actually could be. But so far, yeah, this thing feels pretty good on a track. You just got to be careful with the acceleration out of corners because it feels like it can get you at any time. Probably you actually want to use a manual transmission too because that's the thing. If you're at a high RPM and you floor it, you're going to pop up and spin all over the place. If you're at a low RPM and you floor it, you'll be okay until it automatically shifts and then you'll start sliding all over the place. Just one thing to watch out for I've noticed with this car. Like, oh, sliding right there, but we can control it. That was actually pretty good. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to try out the drag version right here because we're right next to the drag strip. So we're going to grab the drag version. You might think, oh, this probably uses the same engine as top speed, but you'd be wrong. This one actually uses a twin turbo setup where the other one was using a supercharger setup. So it kind of affects how it delivers the power. The other one was a little bit more smooth. This one's a little bit more peaky. So it does make more power, but the other one actually kind of feels faster, interestingly enough. So anyways, we're going to make our way over here, turn on the nitrous because we're ready to race. Let's see how the lights are working. I think the lights should go on if you just kind of sit here long enough, don't they? There we go. All right, come on. Three, two, one, go. I couldn't rev it up really good, but launch is decent enough because it has so much power. It makes up for the lack of a good launch. And 200 plus miles per hour in the end right there. Top speed is about 230, it looks like. Let's slow this thing down. And you'll notice this one had a different transmission. This one had a automatic transmission made for drag racing. And was the brakes overheating right there? It looked like it said the brakes were overheating right there because you got the lightest brakes possible, so it takes nothing to overheat them. I got to try that again and see if I was right when I saw that. All right, real quickly, just another run right here. We'll try to have a little bit of a better launch. Uh, I guess the way I should do it is probably use the trans brake, but that seems like a lot of effort, so I'm going to do this the slightly lazy way that mostly works. We're going to go into neutral, rev it up, and then just shift into drive, and it mostly works. It actually didn't feel like that much better of a launch than last time, but I'm not here to set records. I'm just here to try it out. So we're going to go up to the high speed and then slam on the brakes and let's see, do the brakes overheat? If they do, it's just barely because I'm not seeing, there we go. There's a little bit of a brake overheat, but that's just barely. And I did go longer than you normally would. So I guess normally they probably wouldn't overheat. And that's really all the drag version is good for, but it's really good at that. Now let's go ahead and do the race version. This is fitted with a race spec suspension and a supercharger. This is not for the faint of hearted and they are telling the truth right there. And they really do mean it. This thing is a handful. I would almost say this thing has too much power for its own good because it has a lot more power than what we're just driving with only a little bit more grip, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm telling the AI to try to get away. And I'm just going to try to keep up with them. And I'm using manual transmission mode to try to keep this thing under control because I need to be able to have the right gear for everything I do. Otherwise, I will slide all over the place super easily. I can catch them on the straightaways. Not bad. But then, oh, whoa, what are they doing? That is not the route that I was expecting from them. I was thinking they would go... Uh, straight through there. All right, now they're going to back up. Well, I can keep up with them in the straights, but then when they start doing stuff like this, it confuses me. Like, they definitely beat me out of a, a dig, though, because I can't get traction like they do. I have to be a lot more gentle on it. Well, you're going to the left now? I didn't even know you could go to the left. 
AI is finding all these new ways they can go that I even know you can go on this racetrack. Alright, go ahead. Just don't take the dirt road. Oh, is that too much power for you too, buddy? I know how you feel. It's a lot of power on me too. Yeah, definitely for me, this is too much power to be 100% honest. Like, I struggle to control this and AI is just all over the place. I'm not even going to try to follow them anymore. That is, like, they just sloppier than me and I am already being sloppy. I think actually pit maneuvering them damaged both of us. That's probably why they were driving so bad. And also, it is affecting my car. Like you can see it's pulling to the right at all times, just a bit, not enough to really mess me up, but gotta be aware of it. And the thing is, I'm, I'm scared to actually accelerate with this thing because it has so much power. It's like, I'm afraid to do anything. And does this thing not have ABS? Because that felt like I gave it more than enough space to brake, but I slung them on the brakes and I just left skid marks. I think the racing version actually doesn't have ABS as well. Yeah, it looked like it. I'm going to do one more test. If the ABS kicks in, I won't hit the wall. If there's no ABS, we'll hit the wall. That's a pretty simple test to do. I don't know how scientific it is, but I'm going to try to estimate the positioning and let's see. Slam on the brakes. Yeah, no ABS. I didn't see the light at all. That's interesting. For some reason, I didn't notice that earlier. So let's bring this thing back over here and we got one more version we're going to be driving around, which is the drift version. So it has extra angle and a supercharger. Make this into a tire melting machine. And that is completely true. We also got two more, which I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to be driving, but I'm going to at least take a look at them. Now, these are both based on the more tame versions of the vehicle. We have a highway patrol and then a Belasco City police. And if you forgot, Belasco City is one of the fictional towns in the BeamNG world. There's another police car that has a similar skin. Let me go ahead and Pull that out for reference. I believe it's on the Grand Marshal, isn't it? Yep. There it is. Belasco City Police. And they look really nice together if you put them like that. Well, let me just wait for it to get up. And there we go. See? They match up. But what's the fun in those kinds of police when you could have Dodge Viper police cars? This one's a Highway Patrol Police Edition based off the American Club Racer. Criminals beware because nobody's going to escape if the cops don't crash trying to catch you. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what would happen for a lot of the cops because many, many cops would not be able to handle a car like this. Hey, what are you doing? He's just off there driving, having a good old time, ain't he? I'm still going to put all, both of these guys over here. We can put their lights on. So they do have functional light bars that look pretty cool. And then we got my drift car over here. I could try to do like some drifting around the mountain. I don't know if there's quite enough space. Like, I might be able to fit on this side, no problem. But then, like if I wanted to fit in between them, I don't think that'll happen. I'm going to try to do a little bit of drifting between them. And no, I hit both of them. So obviously, yeah, there's not enough space. If I hit one of them, well, you can say, well, I was inaccurate. But no, I hit both of them. Right, let's go ahead and try to drift into him just a little bit. Well, not really drifting. We're just doing donuts. Equally fun, though. But it looks like we're going to need to reset the car because it is pulling to the right. So let's just go ahead and do that. And now we're going to try to drift this thing. Now, this is one of those cars where when you drift it, you don't need to give it any help. Some of them, you like want to pull the e-brake. This one, you don't want to touch the e-brake because you can drift it by just... Tapping the normal brake right there. You see, look at how much slide we got without any e-brake. You don't need to e-brake. If you e-brake this thing, you're just going to spin out of control and start doing donuts. That's what it feels like to me, at least. So there we did. We did one corner. Can we do two? Probably not, but here we go. Two in a row. And that's good enough. Let's cut it a little close on the inside because I don't like that wall. Well, that was a little too close. I wanted to be close to the inside, not that much. Okay, we did two drifts. That is my drift quota for the day. Now we're going to crash it. Try to do a light crash right there. Whoa, or completely miss the wall. There's a little bit of a crash. I want to do like a few light bumps here and there and see how it holds up. Obviously, it's going to hold up fine for something like that. I mean, a little bit more damage than that. Oh, I missed the wall again. This thing spins out too fast. I want to hit the wall and spin at the same time. But just spin, spin, spin. Now, there's a couple of hits, actually. Kind of see. Okay, there goes the rear bumper. The trunk of the vehicle looks fine. The front right there. That looks pretty decent. Let's get another hit at the rear real quickly. Wing is holding on, a little bit slightly misshapen now after the impact, but it's holding on. Overall, multiple impacts, it did perfectly fine. I have nothing to complain about there. So let's go ahead and finish things off for this video. We're going to go and do a leap of death run, but I don't think we need a brutal slope run because we already did a lot of high speed impacts already. And for this, why don't we go crazy? Why don't we use the fastest version we can get? which in this situation will probably be the drag version because it'll be able to put down the power more than the top speed one, I would think. Or maybe not. I don't know. But they're going to be close enough where it probably doesn't matter. And one thing I should have mentioned before, though, when we were driving in the other one with the drift run, the audio for the game was being really weird. I don't know if that was the car we because we had so many of them, but it was popping and cracking a lot. That was just what I heard. I don't know. I think it should be the same in the recording, unless I'm having a hardware issue. Anyways, we're going to do these crashes at full speed. So there's crash number one. You can see the bottle of nitrous in there. 
The wheelie bar is actually holding on pretty well. I'm not actually sure if the wheelie bar can come off. It might be a permanent fixture. If it stays on through the next one, I'm going to assume probably pretty much permanent. Yeah. Anyways, that will do it for this video. Till next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya. As we go into the water. <laughs>